All right, here we are. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today, uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time of day it is for you. Uh, I'm Ben Collins, the product manager for Garmin's Descent product line of dive computers. Uh, I'm a uh, free diver, a scuba diver, a swimmer, a surfer, um, just a general ocean enthusiast. Uh, when I'm not in the water, when I'm when I'm out on the land, I, I'm an avid triathlete, formerly competitive uh, triathlete, and uh, I'm joined here today with Patrick Danko. Patrick is a uh, we call him a dive nerd. Um, he he is responsible for bringing dive to Garmin or bringing Garmin to dive, I guess. Uh, and um, really thrilled to have you here, Patrick. You're a technical diver, a CCR diver, a dive instructor. Um, is there anything you don't do? Uh, there's lots that I don't do. There's very little that I don't aspire to do. So yeah, I'm always learning, always a student of dive, but yeah, it's my passion. Amazing. So uh, today we are going to talk about <laughs> some new features on the Descent product line. Um, we have uh, Garmin dive computers use what's called subwave technology for our underwater uh, wireless communication. Uh, we'll talk about what that is, how it works, some of the new features, diver distance, being able to see how far away divers are from you. Uh, we'll go into diver messaging, some of the, sa uh, some of the safety features around descent with um, diver assistance mode, which is also new. And um, then we'll talk about com compatibility, uh, and Patrick is going to um, help us understand how to use this as a diver and how it's useful. Um, sound good? All right, let's get going. So, subwave technology. Um, this is our underwater communication protocol. Uh, it uses sound instead of radio frequency to send messages between divers. Um, Patrick, you were around when Garmin first started developing this. So can you tell me some of the reasons that Garmin decided to go with an acoustic sonar based modem uh, rather than the, the more traditional radio frequency? Yeah, sure. Early on when we started looking at how to bring air integration into the descent product line, uh, we looked around. Uh, obviously, most uh, solutions out on the market are using radio frequency, which has you know, uh, uh, you know, good reliability close in, but really when you started to get anywhere at distance, it started to break down and having uh, a deep history of working with sonar and different data communications protocols, we saw an opportunity to bring something uh, that was not just reliable, but also extended the divers capabilities out at ranges with their buddy teams that really um, enabled some new types of diving experiences. So. Sonar having a transducer in the watch and a sonar transducer in the transmitter allows us to greatly extend the range and also the capabilities of what types of data that we were sending. So not just the uh, the tank pressure, which we uh, certainly is, is sort of the, the core part of this, but being able to also transmit your depth out to other divers. Uh, and as you'll hear in this uh, this uh, webinar, we'll talk about messaging and some other features. So it, it became a, a foundation for us to really extend the capabilities of a diver well past just air integration. Right, and we'll we'll talk also a little bit about diver distance, but that uh, one of the the additional sort of side benefits of sound is that the the speed of sound is uh, very reliable through water, and so uh, based on time of flight, we can use those sonar transmissions to calculate how far away uh, divers are from each other. So um, that's another feature that, that we're launching uh, in our next software release that, uh, that I'm pretty excited about as well. Um, so air integration uh, works with your transceiver that's, that's sitting on, the, on your tank and it is just sending out your tank pressure and your current depth um, periodically so that you your watch picks that up so that other divers pick that up, uh, that works out to, to 10 meters. Your watch can, can hear another transmitter 10 meter up to 10 meters away, um, depending on the conditions. Um, in perfect conditions, it might even be farther. Uh, and then diver messaging, we'll get into in more detail, but uh, this is your, uh, your, your watch is able to transmit a message to your tank pod. Your tank pod is kind of the modem of the system and that broadcast that message out. Uh, 
your the the new T2 is is able to hear it's a transceiver so that's the that's the update from the T1 to the T2 T2 is that the T2 is able to listen for those messages and relay them to the watch uh, that's what gets us up to a 30 meter range on the messaging and uh, and so yeah we'll talk more about messaging but that's kind of how it works we've got these these sound transmissions it's almost like an old dial up modem and uh, uh, your tank pod is kind of the the hub of all of that so um so getting into diver messaging i know we get a lot of questions about what this is how you should use it um patrick and i'm, I'm really interested to hear from you on uh how you've used this how you see yourself using this especially you know in the, the various types of diving you do between being a dive instructor with groups of students and um, going on more technical dives with with more advanced divers um so tell me you know, just kind of spell it out for me. What is what is dive messaging? What does it do? Yeah, so uh, thanks for that, Ben. So it's, you know, since the beginning of diving, the way you communicate with each other underwater is hand signals, right? You you need a visual connection, which you should have if you're diving uh, properly with your buddy team uh, anyway. But conditions can make that challenging um, if you're diving with multiple buddy pairs uh, and you get separated and need to communicate with one another. That can be challenging. Uh, I think uh, if you do for any length of time, you end up in situations where um, visibility is bad. You get uh, you know stuck in some current. You lose track, or you can see your buddy, but you can't get their attention. Uh, they may be really interested in taking a photo of something, and you're uh, you're trying to get their attention. So having an ability to at distance be able to send a message to your buddy or your buddy team basic messaging enough to communicate uh, you know the the basic fundamental diver messaging things are you okay um, you know I need you to come to me hey I, we need to end the dive I need some assistance those types of things where it pushes that message to the diver's wrist it, 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 it creates an audible or it creates a buzz it it gets that diver's attention if they're task focused on on something it creates a an additional layer of safety. This is not going to replace your you know hand based communication uh, as a diver underwater, but it augments that and it creates another way to get that diver's attention and help communicate if you're not in in visual range or if you need that diver just to turn around and look at you and so you can commu uh, communicate in more detail. So the messaging that we have on the descent is simple. It's designed to be simple, it's designed to be easy to access, easy to use. This is not typing out text messages underwater. Uh, this is a set of pre-canned, preset messages. You can see the message list here, come to me. Are you okay? Okay, no, safely in the dive. And there's a diver assistance mode that, uh, that really indicates, hey, this diver needs some help. But it's a simple message list that most importantly is easy to access when you're diving. So during your dive, uh, at any point, you can hit the enter menu, which on descent pulls up your in-dive menu. Uh, one of those options is messaging. You can select your message and put that out into the water. And if you hold the enter key, that acts as a hot key, so even easier to get straight into that, uh, that message uh, list, send that message out. So you're not having to fumble around with a bunch of uh, button presses. It really is a simple process to get to these messages. And then as you can see in this uh, screenshot here, if you're on the receiving side of that, you still keep that visual of all of your essential dive in, uh, data, your depth, your, your NDL, TTS, your, your uh, dive time. But then up at the top, you get a simple note. Who sent the message and what's the message? So it gives you a, a, a easy way to be notified of those messages without being intrusive to the dive experience. And we, you mentioned hotkeys, and we won't go deep into that, but that, that is a new feature on MK3 that we have these underwater hotkeys that really help you get to tools like messaging or uh, the, the diver dashboard uh, that um, let you see additional information and tools at, at the press of a button. So really, really easy navigation on the watch. I, I love that. Um, so tell me, you know let's get into a couple of scenarios so you, mm -hmm. you you mentioned just diving with a group being able to get someone's attention um you know there's there's a, a few different types of diving you do I, I know just a few weeks ago you were out with a, a group of new divers uh instructing and um you know how would you how would you use messaging or how would you use these new features in in that scenario versus uh when you were diving on the oriskany with some friends uh last year 
Yeah, great question. So one of the things I love about the descent and what we've built with Subway in general is in a class scenario, if each of the students has uh, a T1 or now a T2 on their regulator, it's a really easy process to, to keep track of all the students' tank pressures. So you can pair with a T2 up to eight. Uh, you can see those tank pressures at, at real diving distance. You don't have to be literally touching shoulders to be able to see those. So keep track of not only the tank pressure and their depth, but now this enables me to get their attention, right? If, if you are an instructor, a dive master, and have spent time guiding or training students, it is a new experience. They're distracted with all of the things that they're worrying about as a student and being able to get their attention and clearly communicate what you need with them is, is a task that we all um, have to work through. This provides another tool uh, if they're wearing these uh, the watches to be able to communicate and most importantly for me to be able to monitor uh, monitor those divers. Uh, you know, when uh, a few buddies and I went into uh, the Oriskany uh, last year, um, we were down at depth. There was three of us diving as a buddy team and uh, going around the wreck, going through the hangar deck. What an amazing wreck, by the way. But, uh, you know, we were very much diving uh, technical style, all rebreather divers. And so we were pretty well set up to be uh, self-sufficient, to have anticipated and uh, issues. We all knew what the dive plan was. But just this ability to, at a reasonable level of distance, keep tabs on each other. OK, I can keep tabs of the depth. I can keep tabs on tank pressure. And then being able to check in, make sure everything's OK. If we're having an issue, a couple of issues on that dive, got hit by a jellyfish. We had another diver come up who was running low on air. We're managing that. So it's another communication tool for us to have, um, again, while you're potentially sort of task loaded and uh, and focus on whatever's going on with dive at hand for your buddy to be able to get your attention. Hey, I need some help. Can you come to me? Uh, in, it, in those in those technical dive scenarios where you might be farther from your from your group, it's also probably really nice to see their depth as well as their absolutely. you know tank pressure and and these other metrics. So seeing how far away they are, what depth they're at, um, that seems like it would come in really handy in those scenarios. Yeah, you and you and I and uh, some of the Garmin team were out doing some test dives uh, last year off the coast of Wilmington and great, uh, great dives uh, with the exception of one thing that was visibility. Visibility <laughs> like was, swimming in milk. <laughs> was like swimming in, in chocolate milk and uh, having despite us being very, very close to each other, seeing hand signals was really hard. So again, having another tool, even if you're diving really close and nearby, Visibility can really make communications a challenge. So this provides another tool just to make sure, hey, is everybody in the dive team OK? You send an OK out to the group, everybody responds. Great, I know we're good. I can see tank pressure, I can see depth. All right, let's continue our, or in that case, our testing. So yeah, very useful tool. Nice. Uh, so dive messaging, I mean, we, we talked a little bit about dive assistance mode. Um, but messaging plays into a safety story that we've been really building with Garmin uh, throughout the, the, our dive products or through our dive products. Um, we had a, a webinar last fall on our inReach devices, and we can touch on that briefly today. But um, let's talk about diver assistance mode. So this is a new mode that works with messaging. Uh, it is kind of the that extreme, like I actually need help right now. Um, something's gone wrong. Um, so diver assistance mode is is really meant to broadcast that out to the other divers and let people know that you're having trouble um, and to do it hands free in a way that you can then try and deal with your problem, uh, knowing that uh, your watch is going to try to get that message out to other divers. Um, have you had to use this, Patrick? Uh, thankfully, I've not had to use this yet except for testing. So no, <laughs> and I hope to never have to, but just like the InReach Mini that I, Mini 2 that I carry around with me all the time, it is awesome peace of mind. Uh, and it's valuable mm -hmm. to know, for example, when you know, I'm diving, especially in a buddy team, diving with my wife, you know, hey, here is a tool when all else fails, I can hit this and it's an extra opportunity to get that urgent situation out to other people who are in the water that could potentially help me. 
Yeah, and I hope I hope this screenshot that says "Help me from from me" it never shows up on your watch, but uh, <laughs> it's it's really nice to know that it's there. Um, so functionally, how this works is the the upper left button, the light button. You you hold it for five to eight seconds. Uh, your watch will come up with this uh, message to all help me. Uh, it can, does a five second countdown, sends that message out, um, or you can just accept it. And uh, on the on the larger watch, on the 51 millimeter MK3i, the flashlight, the integrated flashlight will, will go to a strobe. Um, you can override that if you're using that to see. Uh, it will work as a normal flashlight. You can turn it back to a solid state. Uh, but that while you're in that messaging, it'll it'll flash, it'll send that message out. And um, any of the divers that are paired to you that are able to see your tank pressure uh, will be able to receive that message if they're within line of sight, within range of, of messaging. Um, and it, your watch will continue to try and send that out every two minutes uh, to try and ensure that, that the other divers get that message. Um, one of the same process for canceling it. Say that again, Patrick. I would say one of the things I do like about this is you hold that down, it starts going into that mode, <clears throat> and then you can go do other things. So if you're dealing with an emergency and you just need to get that message out into the water, put it into diver assistance mode, and then you can go about trying to solve whatever your issue is, knowing that your watch is going to continuously be reaching out to the, the um, buddies you have around, potentially calling in help. So. Uh, especially in emergency situations, you know, it's similar to, you know, uh, aviators, aviate, uh, navigate, communicate in that order. And as a diver, we want to be working as much as we can focused on solving the problems. <clears throat> Communication is an important part of that, but we don't want it to be a distraction. We don't want it to pull away from the other things that might keep you safe. So having this thing on your wrist that you just, okay, it's continuously pinging, it's pulsing a light to help people find me if it's dark or murky. It's a, it's a really great tool. Yeah, so um, that's that's right. Just try, we try to make it really simple, something that you could just set and then go about trying to solve your problem. Uh, and then the other great thing about Subwave is those other divers, they can look at, at your information when they get this message. They can look and see, oh, Patrick's tank pressure is low, or, uh, and they'll be able to see your depth, your tank pressure, um, and, and how far away you are, uh, which really, helps kind of give context to what the issue may be and, and helps get people to your location. Um, so ending that is the same process. You hold the, the button for five to eight seconds. It sends out an I'm OK message to uh, same way, sends out the I'm OK and uh, the strobe stops flashing and, um, and you can continue on your dive. So that's just another tool in the in the diver network so if you're underwater you use that hopefully you get back together if there is a problem uh, when you get to the surface again we we have our inreach system uh, we have a dive case for the inreach mini 2 that lets you take it down to 100 meters um, and our uh, our inreach system it works with satellites so you get on the surface um, i know i dive with this every single dive patrick you've you've talked many times about how you will not dive in the ocean without this um, we've seen uh, quite a few people getting rescued from being stranded in the ocean, carried away by current or left by the boat, uh, who have been able to use the satellite connectivity to get somebody to come find them. And they, they see the exact location. Uh, I actually use this on almost every single dive, but my use case, and I think yours as well, Patrick, is uh, a little bit more benign. I, uh, I love getting you back to the surface taking my watch, sending a preset message that says, dive finished, I'm doing great, see you soon. Uh, and then my, my loved ones at home uh, know that I'm okay. Uh, I have an anxious spouse and, and I love being able to send that message. Um, anything else you wanna add to that, Patrick? Uh, no, I have exactly the same situation. You know, My wife, uh, especially for uh, longer, deeper tech dives, She's like, what's your dive plan? When are you gonna be, you know, expect to be back up? And even if she's not even on that dive trip, you know, she loves getting that sort of message back saying, hey, done with the dive, everything went great. She can relax and uh, enjoy the rest of her day and um, not have to not have to worry. So even when you're offshore, you have a non-emergency based communication tool that's super easy to use, integrates to the, the descent. So you can use it still if it's in your thigh pocket or lashed onto your VC, it's still accessible and usable. 
Uh, it also, you can set it to track. And if you're on a week long live aboard, you, you can have a track log of your, your trip you know, following you around the Bahamas or wherever you happen to be at. Um, as you said, I, I, I dive with this every single time I'm, I'm in the water, especially on ocean dives. It just is always there uh, in my thigh pocket or on my BC, uh, you know, there as a, as a help. It's really like, it's like my DSMB. I always have a DSMB, I always have my in reach. It's just part of the standard kit that I have. Totally. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about how, how InReach works, uh, the nuts and bolts, uh, I talked with the, the product manager for InReach last fall, and we have a, a link to that um, webinar. You can find that recording if you want to go back and see the, uh, you know, how these responses work, how our, our Garmin Response Center responds to a dive emergency. Um, so we have the underwater messaging and diver assistance mode now underwater to help you get together with your group. And when you get above water, we have the inReach satellite communication system that helps you communicate with the Garmin response in an emergency or your loved ones in and uh, you know, when it's not an emergency. Uh, so let's before we get to Q and A, uh, I see a lot of questions are coming in from the audience, and I want to get to those. Let's talk about compatibility. Uh, so if you have the newest generation stuff, you have the MK3i and the T2. Um, we talked a little bit about how this works, but the the transmitter, the T2, is able to, and, and the T1 as well, so the transmitter works by measuring tank pressure and depth, and then it broadcasts that out to the other devices. So uh, that's a 10 meter range that you get for, um, for tank pressure, depth, distance. Um, the messaging works by, the watch has to actually send that message to the tank pod. The, the tank pod sends it out and the, uh, uh, the other divers tank pods will listen to that and, and relay it to the other watches. So that's a 30 meter distance. That's why you have that 30 meters for messaging versus 10 for uh, tank pressure, depth and distance. Um, so ideal scenario, you've got the newest generation. All of these features we're talking about today work and you can pair up to eight divers, uh, eight tanks with your watch. So you're, yourself and seven other divers, but you can have eight divers total in that network um, and send messages up to 30 meters, tank pressure, depth and distance up to 10. Now, what happens if you have devices from previous generations? Well, Subwave is backwards compatible, okay? But if you, uh, but not every device has the the hardware capability of doing these things. So if you if you have an MK2 in the system, the MK2 uh, can't send or receive messages. Um, that's just a hardware limitation of the MK2i, uh, and so it's still going to work with tank pressure. You're still going to be able to see your distance to that diver who's using an MK2i. Um, so if, if I'm out with Patrick, we both have transmitters, the new, latest transmitters, but Patrick's diving with an MK2i, we lose messaging, but we still have tank pressure, depth, and distance, uh, which is which is really nice. Now, if you have T1s, uh, the T1s still work. So if you if you have T1s that you've been using, you have multiple tanks, um, these are still really useful. You put them on uh, your spare tanks, you put them on another diver you can see the tank pressure in depth. So, you know, Patrick, if you have extra T1s laying around and you're, you're teaching a class, um, this is something you could put those transmitters on your students and see all of their tank pressure. Um, I know you, you talked about it briefly, but um, just the ability to see other divers tank pressure and not have to stop and ask for, for what their air is every few minutes um, is just, it's, it's beneficial in a one-on-one, -on -one, just two divers together. And I can only imagine we were teaching a class that just becomes a real chore to have to check diver uh, air frequently. So yeah, it's it is something that sounds really simple, but it does fundamentally change how you dive when everybody on the dive team can track everyone else's tank pressure or the instructor or the dive master tracking their their students or their their clients. It gives you an ability to plan the dive, plan your turns, anticipate who's going to be low first. You know, you have that just by looking down at your wrist and it provides that situational awareness that is, uh, you don't really realize how much you miss it until you have it. And uh, especially with the buddy teams that I dive with now, everyone knowing all the time, everyone's tank pressure. Like once I hit my turn pressure, I literally look around and look at my buddy and he already knows, yep, 
time to turn around without really having to do any other communication because we've already you know, we're so aware of each other's situation. So really nice. And then yeah, with the T1s that I know many of us have, you know, being able to reuse those for students, put those on a you know a, another bottle that I might be carrying that isn't really part of the communication flow, but I want to keep an eye on tank pressure. It becomes uh, it's nice to have that backwards compatibility for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and in the T1s, if you have MK3s, you can pair up to eight transmitters, T1 or T2. Uh, the the MK2I is limited to five, um, but the the MK3 now can can pair up to to eight. So that's another advantage of uh, of moving up to that MK3I. But T1s, T2s, they're going to work. Your T1s are still going to give you uh, what they they're giving you today. Those new features require a T2. Uh, diver messaging requires the MK3. Um, so let's just full ecosystem here. The MK3i, this is now, Subwave is now on the, the smaller size as well. Uh, in the MK3i version, make sure you get the i, that's the one with the, the transducer Subwave. Um, those features are on both sizes. So if it, if it is a Subwave product, small 43 millimeter, large 51 millimeter, um, you get all those same features. Uh, the main difference is the MK3i 51 millimeter has a flashlight integrated. It has a larger battery and um, it is uh, a larger display as well. So um, the, the subway features themselves, messaging, distance, depth, pressure, those all work with both sizes. They both pair to your, your T2 the same way. 